Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm at the California State Railroad Museum. I've been here once before. It's really cool inside. Tons of stuff to look at. They got model railroads, they got trains on display, the history of the railroad, steam train to Sacramento, California. It's 102 out today, so I'm glad I'm going inside. So let's go check out the California State Railroad Museum for all you train buffs out there. I'm one of them. All right, let's go check it out. Just a side note, I'm not a train expert. I love trains, so I might make some mistakes in the video identifying trains, but I'll do the best I can. So here's the thing on the ground um, when you walk in. These are really cool. They're all made out of railroad ties and it's art on display when you walk in the museum. And they're depicting uh, working on the railroad. A little crescent wrench on that guy. That one's cool with a gauge on it. And they got a signal here, a crossing signal, old one. Now this is a beast. This is the 4294. It's a 4882. And that's the wheels, basically. Uh, the count of the wheels going from front to back. It weighs over a million pounds, and it's a Baldwin. Uh, it's retired in 1956, and it's art articulating. So it has two sets of drive wheels because it's so big. When you go around a corner, if it wasn't articulating, it would jam up in the corner. So the two sets of drive wheels swivel. Look how big this thing is. When you're standing next to it, it's mammoth. And it's also uh, called a cab forward design. So uh, I was talking to one of the guys that works here and he says because of the smoke, it would be blasted into the engineer's face all day long with such a big train. So they reversed it. So it's uh, going basically backwards, forwards. It's an old picture of it. Um, Baldwin made it in 1944, so it wasn't, um, didn't go very long. 44 to 56 is not a long time. But as most of you know, diesel took over steam. But this thing is an amazing thing to look at. It is, and only, if I could only see it running. The noise it must have made. It's pretty uh, impressive. The centerpiece here at the museum. Here's a view of the whole thing. It's it's. There's a guy standing there. You see how huge it is. And here's the front view. depiction of the famous spike um, where they connected the east and the west coast rail lines and the golden spike it was the last spike um, put into the ground with the two connecting trains tracks this stopwatch I'm not sure exactly what it is about but it looks pretty cool let's see if it says anything here on the side gold gold locket from 1870 and here's a drawing of the two connections there's some pictures of the two famous trains the jupiter meeting 
everybody's celebrating. There's a model of the Jupiter. A pretty detailed scale model here. This is a tribute to the Chinese uh, workers. 90% of our rails here in California were built by Chinese labor. They were hard workers. And uh, something tells me they weren't treated very good, but um, they built our railroad, so we owe it a lot to them. This is uh, named after Governor Stanford. This is uh, one of the very first engines brought over in 1862 from the East Coast. It was the first uh, excursion, freight, and passenger train. It's a 440, and that's a Central Pacific train. This room here, they got a lot of neat things on display. It really gives you an idea of what it was like back then. But this is an example of one of the very first engines here. of the tunnels and the hard working. Here's a tunnel through the Sierras and they got a cool painting on the background. Another picture of it. If you drive up in Tahoe over the Donner Pass and look to your right you can see those tunnels. There's another picture of that engine. This museum is amazing though, really, uh, the detail done in here is very, very special. It's another picture of the tunneling in the Sierras. And this is a survey. So these guys went ahead and surveyed where the track should be laid. And here's all their equipment they used to use. Here's some various uh, period correct um, signs and paraphernalia here. And here's a railroad operator. Monterey and Salinas. Um, as you can see all over, they have things in this museum to look at. There's pictures of people and they have these displays all over. Here's the uh, communications. Various types. Uh, the band, Western Pacific uh, Band. Here's a quick shot of some lanterns here over the years. Some um, Pretty neat lanterns, and also a lot of detail here. Here's a Sonoma train, another 440. And uh, just all over the place in this museum, every corner has something cool to look at. You got to think about the railroad. That was, you know, the only way to get around back then. So it was a pretty big deal. A lot of history. Unfortunately, that history is almost gone now. I mean, there is Amtrak, but Amtrak, I don't think many people ride Amtrak. Maybe I'm wrong.
some movies, and there's a hand, prosthetic hand with spring fingers from the 40s, prosthetic leg, broken rail, could cause an accident. This display is talking about the nurses on the railroad. And various catalogs and ribbons and medals. Here's a guy pounding the spikes. Those guys, those guys worked hard every day, I'll tell you that. Here's another um, example of a beautiful restored train. This is a tamper machine. They would uh, the ballast it would tamper the ballast down in the rails. Ballast is the gravel under the wooden under the wood and various tools you'd use. And here's a beautiful dining car, bedroom, bathroom, and I'm looking out a uh, food transportation car, refrigerator car, is the outside of it, and that's how you'd get things from east to west coast. So uh, over time, the people on the East Coast could enjoy California fruit. And this is a beautiful dining car, totally restored. And some of the china. And dining cars back then, the food was, you know, five star. Super good food. And in some trains, it still is. see there's tons of things to look at here it's um, definitely worth coming if you're a train buff even if you're not it's a really good place to check out the history of our country and it's so well put together and there's uh, docents walking around that you can ask questions and they'll give you some education on what you're looking at. I would like to ride a train. There's one in Canada that goes from west to east and it's and called the Zephyr, I'm pretty sure. I want to ride that someday. Now here's another one. 4466. This is a. Uh, most of these trains burned uh, oil. They started with wood in the very early days, then converted to coal, then converted to oil. Now, the coal burning trains started a lot of fires. Because the coal, the hot coal would fall on the tracks and catch fires. And so much so that they used to have fire trains run behind them with the ability to put out fires. And the train that runs in um, New Mexico, the Toltec and Chama line, still uses coal so they have to have a fire train by law follow it and I was talking to the guy up there when we stopped by the train yard and he told us that that um they could start for forest fires but they're working on converting 
all the trains to oil. Yeah, the um, Chama and Toltec. You can look at all the details here and all the valves. A lot of a lot of things you had to know and adjust just to get it right. The boiling pressure and the steam pressure. And you had to make sure there was water in it at all times or it could get too hot and blow up in a bad scenario. You had to oil everything. All these moving parts had to be constantly oiled because if they dried out, they would wear out extremely fast. they're working on being restored the chassis uh, they don't have it on the chassis but the top look at how great of a job they're doing with this pretty amazing work this museum does and here's a classic diesel and basically when these came around uh, steam was pretty much on its way out they were so much more efficient um, these diesel trains. Now, I didn't realize this until, you know, a while ago, probably 20 years ago. But diesel trains, I always thought the diesel motor powered the train wheels. Well, it doesn't. The diesel motor powers a generator that generates electricity for the drive wheel so this is like a giant tesla basically with a diesel motor powering the electricity interesting and this is all about the snow and the snow removal equipment those things are crazy when you see them up close this is the snow and the donner summit in sierra they had these giant snow plows and they later created the these are hydraulic ones here they created this big giant spinning one you see this guy here that thing would spin and it had its own steam engine controlling it to get through the snow and this is a cool car this is a the postal car this is the outside of it i'm gonna go inside there's a little history of the U.S. mail from 1860 all the way up to the 80s. And here's the inside of it. So as you're going along, you would constantly be grabbing mail at the town and dropping it off. And here's a little window. You look at that bag hanging there. There's a hook and you grab it. And you didn't want to miss it. If you missed it, those people uh, wouldn't get their mail taken care of. And then you'd sort the mail here. And wherever the train stopped, you'd offload the majority of the mail and it would go on to its destinations. But this is how people communicated back then. all the boxes they'd sort things in and the whole time this train's rolling along so you can imagine the shaking and the noise there's some examples of letters and so that's a old mail car which is pretty cool there's a depiction of railroad workers in bronze look at the muscles on those guys southern pacific big sign there and this is a beautiful beautiful display here of another 440 just uh, gorgeous Southern CP Huntington, the 
number one. Back to the 4294, the Beast. And this is the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. Now this one, um, Virginia City in Nevada was known for their silver. Um, and this one went from Virginia City to Reno and Carson City. But mostly Virginia City, Reno. And this is meticulously restored also. And they even put mirrors on the ceiling and under the train. So you can really see everything, literally everything about this train there is to see. Hello. The day I was filming, it was 103 outside. It was nice to be inside. But look at the restoration they did on this is just amazing and it's nice that it won't be damaged because it's inside a building for generations of folks to see another one now they have to see this is I'm on the second floor and this is a short line and a really neat display here also on the second floor you got the whole um, cab engineer in there So there's a freight car here. We got some stolaways there getting a free ride. I used to call them hobos, I believe. Train train hoppers. That'd be a rough deal. We got a tank car, a really old one. Transporting oil or flammable liquids. And a caboose. And another. Well, this guy probably works for the railroad if he's in the caboose. Freight car guy, I don't think so. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you on my next video.